Hello and welcome to the week ahead video with me, David Madden. Today's date is Friday the 12th of October 2018 and the time has just gone 9.45 British summer time. And I'm looking ahead to the week ahead which begins Monday the 15th of October until Friday the 19th of October. Um, first of all, this morning here in Europe we've had a, a, a reasonable size bounce back. We've had a couple of uh, major sell-offs uh, at the back uh, during the week. Uh, and we've seen a small bit of a bounce back in um, in Europe today. We had a relatively calm uh, and a bit of a mixed session in Asia overnight. Um, there's, there's a few reasons for that. Uh, first of all, the U.S. Treasury stated that they don't believe uh, the Chinese authorities have been manipulating the Chinese yuan, the domestic currency. And also, we had some trade figures out of, out of, out of China overnight. Uh, the trade surplus increased, and the, and the the trade surplus with the USA actually increased to a record high. Uh, so on one hand, you could you could argue that President Trump has vindicated in his decision to try and go after China and actually impose impose tariffs as a way of actually re reimbalancing the trading relationship between the two countries. There's also an argument to be made that tariffs are already in place uh, on, on Chinese and Chinese imports, and actually the, the the trading surplus that China has with the US is actually increasing. So the relatively calm session that we had, uh, and a bit mixed, mixed session that we had in Asia overnight, led to a, a small bit of a bounce back in Europe today. Uh, but ultimately, the the fears, uh, the issues which uh, trigger the, the sell-off we've seen in the last couple of days, uh, are, are actually are still very much uh, still very much in play. Um, the, 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 the fears in relation to prospect of higher interest rates from the United States and also political uncertainty uh, in Italy because the, the administration in Rome is set to go kind of to clash heads with Brussels in, in relation to the, the proposed budget deficit. Uh, these issues are, are still ongoing. Uh, but if traders can kind of just get used to the fact that we are probably looking to, at having higher interest rates in the United States in the next coming next coming next number of months, this could transpire to just be a, a bit of a speed bump. Um, bearing in mind U.S. markets, particularly the tech sector, had a great run through the kind of second half of 2018. At the Nasdaq 100, was, was clocking up uh, record highs between all between June and August of 20, 2018, and we also uh, we also had record highs from the from the Dow and the S&P 500 on top of that. So a bit of a pullback was always kind of a uh, result of the pipeline. In the next few weeks, uh, we, we, are, we are coming into reporting season, so we're going to hear, have updates for major U.S. companies, which we'll be touching on in a second in relation to the week ahead itself. So this, this could also be a, a bit of a, a bit of profit taking in advance of the of the quarterly updates. Traders are going to be keeping an eye on the forward guidance uh, during during the uh, reporting season, because uh, as I said, uh, interest rates have risen in, in the in the U.S. Um, three on th three occasions in 2018, and we are expecting more rate hikes in the next 12 months. So the forward guidance and also the just overall concerns about the state of the global economy, emerging market economies are under pressure and under, under even more pressure due to a relatively strong U.S. dollar. The greenback has, has gained a fair bit of ground in recent months, and also the relatively high yields can also put it, U.S. yields are putting pressure on the U.S. economy. So taking a taking a look at the actual events coming up next week. <clears throat> On Monday the 15th, uh, we have U.S. retail sales. Uh, consumer, the Compass Board um, Consumer sur Survey in the U.S. recently hit an 18-year high. Unemployment is, is at its lowest level since 1969. Ultimately, the American economy is, in, by and large, producing, producing strong economic indicators. But the retail sales will be a true gauge of actually how confident Americans are. Essentially, um, the, the, the more Americans earn, the more they go out and spend. And wages, even though they've ticked back recently, they're still kind of higher than they were of, of, on average in the last couple of years. Looking ahead to Tuesday the 16th, uh, we have Chinese PPI and Chinese CPI. And on Friday the 19th, uh, we have Chinese third quarter GDP, we have fixed asset investment, and we also have industrial production. So these figures coming out of China are all, are all going to be about how strong and how strong demand is in the Chinese economy. Uh, the Chinese economy has been cooling down since, since 2010, but the last number of years it's been kind of declining, or it's been, it has been cooling, but it's been cooling at a relatively stable and steady rate. So traders are, are going to be looking at the CPI, PPI, the GDP, the fixed asset investment, and also the industrial production, and also the industrial production numbers to try and gauge how strong or weak the Chinese economy is. As I mentioned, uh, the, the trade figures would suggest that the, the, the tariffs President Trump and Paulson in China haven't actually really impacted the, the, the economy so far. So the, the, the figures that we'll see next week will give us better indication. Uh, on Tuesday, we have third quarter figures from Netflix. 
the share price of Netflix hit an all-time high in June. We did see a bit of selling off in advance of the second quarter figures in July. The second quarter figures in July were good, but they weren't good enough. Uh, essentially, the company is attracting more, more customers at, uh, at home, both in the US and on the international market, but they didn't match the fairly high expectations that customers have. Uh, sorry, they didn't, ha- they didn't match the expectation that analysts have. So it's all about the actual hot can the company actually beat the beat the expected uh, customer uh, customer customer expectations? Is what it's all about. Competition continues to be tough um, within the kind of streaming market. Um, the Amazon, Apple, or Apple, are, Apple are in play. Disney are, are looking to kind of launch their own streaming service. So it is going to be about get spending quite a bit of money on content because quality content is king. Uh, and if the companies essentially can, 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 can keep drawing new customers and exceeding the expectations, it's, it's likely we could see a continuation in, in, the, in the, uh, the wider upper trend of the share price. Uh, on Tuesday, we have some numbers out of the UK. Uh, on Tuesday, we have unemployment and average earnings. On Wednesday, we have UK CPI. And on Thursday, we have UK retail sales. Uh, so basically, the British economy is in, in, in fairly decent shape uh, the last number of months. Uh, the jobless rate is only 4%. It's low since 1975. To be perfectly honest, whether unemployment moves one tenth up or down, this really make a difference. The, you know, the jobs market is very strong. Uh, earnings have ticked up in the UK. Earn, average earnings, excluding bonuses, uh, increased by 2.9% on a year-on-year basis, which is quite decent. Once again, when, when the, the more Britons earn, the more likely to want to spend. And if the job market economy, if the jobs economy, the jobs, uh, my jobs market really is tightening, you'd imagine that employers would actually start paying more, or offering more to attract new staff. So keep an eye on the on the earnings component. Uh, CPI in the in the UK is at 2.7%, so it's actually below the average earnings rate. So employees are getting a, a real increase um, in, in wages, which is positive. Once again, the British, economy, the British uh, consumers earn more, they go out and spend more. So keep an eye on the uh, on the rate of inflation in relation to the earnings figure. Um, on Wednesday, we ha- have um, Eurozone CPI and Eurozone Core CPI. Uh, this is the um, this, this for the whereas the preliminary report came out a number of weeks ago and showed that the uh, the, head, the headline CPI figure jumped up to 2.1 percent from 2 percent, but the core figure, which strips out things like energy and, uh, and food, actually declined to 0.9 percent from from 1 percent. So it would suggest that actual genuine demand has actually cooled a bit in the eurozone, but the headline figure was possibly possibly only pushed up because of the relatively high oil prices. Uh, ultimately, it's, all, it's always going to be about demand for the European Central Bank. They want to see strong demand before they look to even consider raising interest rates. Uh, the ECB, European Central Bank, aren't looking to raise uh, interest rates until at least the back end of next year, even if then. So we would even see fairly decent demand uh, coming from the Eurozone before then. As I mentioned earlier on, please keep an eye on the situation in Italy. We could have a bit of a clash between the Italian government and, and Brussels. And if you do see any downgrades or any concerns about downgrades on Italian debt, that could also put pressure on the current on the euro. On Wednesday, we have full year figures from ASOS. Uh, and ASOS are continue, continuing to do well. Sales are up, profits are up, but the company has such a lofty valuation. Um, the price to earnings ratio is 64. So any kind of signs the company isn't going to deliver stellar results. Uh, the share price uh, does tend to take a bit of a knock, uh, so, which we saw over the summer. Um, in the summer, uh, ASOS said that four-month sales uh, up until June increased by up, increased by 22%, but that wasn't good enough. Uh, and as we're expecting somewhere in the region around 25.8 to 27. ASOS also said that full-year um, pr- uh, sales and profits are going to be up, but the sales forecast is going to be at the lower end of their own guidance. So we have seen a bit of a bit of selling pressure on ASOS recently. On Wednesday, we have uh, uh, well, what begins on Wednesday is a two-day EU summit, and this is this will be very potentially very important in relation to Brexit. Uh, the speculation that we could that we could have if there is to be a deal announced um, between the UK and the uh, European Union, if there is to be to be a deal announced in relation to the withdrawal deal, it could be this week potentially. Uh, so keep an eye on the pound sterling on the back of that. On Wednesday, we have the minutes from the Fed meeting last month, where the Federal Reserve raised interest rates by 0.25%. It was the third high rate hike of 2018. The Federal Reserve also managed to actually upgrade its outlook for growth um, for the next couple of years in, this, in, the, in the same meeting. This will be the minutes of, from that meeting. Uh, and since then, keep in mind, Jerome Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve, has come out and said that the US uh, uh, neutral, 
the US economy and the US rates are still nowhere near at the neutral rate. So that kind of led traders to believe that we're in the, we're in the pipeline for more interest rate hikes. Turning our attention to Friday when we had Canadian CPI. Uh, the most recent reading of Canadian CPI was the August report where it, it, it came in at 2.8%, down from 3%. Down from 3% um, in in July, which was actually a seven-year high, whereas the core CPI rate in Canada managed to tick up to 1.7%, uh, which is basically a, a two-year high. So demand is, is clearly is clearly fairly strong in Canada. The recent jobs figures from Canada on the on the on the, uh, on the surface was actually quite positive. Over 60, 63,000 jobs were added, but there was a decline of eight, of over of um, nearly 17,000 jobs. And in relation to full-time jobs, and, and the whereas part-time jobs rose by over 80,000, so it wasn't as good as initially expected. The Canadian Central Bank are often a kind of a few months behind the Federal Reserve when it comes to hiking rates, and they often just like to kind of keep, kind of keep the gap not too small between the Fed rate, uh, Fed's uh, rate hikes and their own. So, given the Fed have hiked three times this year, and there's, and, and there's high probability of a rate hike in December, we could potentially see a rate hike. From the Bank of Canada at the back end of October. And finally, uh, we have an update from a number of major U US banks. On Thursday the 16th, we have an update, from, third quarter update from Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley. And on Friday, we have the third quarter, third quarter update from State Street. Um, for the wider banking sector, investors are going to be keeping an eye on the FIC, the, how, how the fixed income currencies and commodities components, how well investment banks, how they're doing in relation to trading the financial markets. Uh, also, also, it also worth pointing out that U.S. government bond yields, uh, the yield curve has been steepening recently. Uh, so basically, the, a higher interest rate environment will will be beneficial to U.S. banking stocks down the line. Taking a look at a couple of the markets um, now, as I mentioned, in relation to some economic indicators coming out of the U.K., we also have the, the EU and some of who would potentially have some sort of breakthrough in relation to Brexit. Taking a look at the pound versus the US dollar, so after a major sell-off between all between April and August, the pound has been kind of pushing higher in recent in recent um, in recent weeks. So you're talking about nearly almost eight weeks of kind of a broadly speaking upward trend, kind of a higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, and push higher yet again. So the broader trend for the last say seven or eight weeks is to the upside in the pound US dollar. It is very much going to be Brexit dependent and you can, whether it's going to be positive or negative or and so on and so forth. But from what we've seen so far and what, what the, um, what the mark, what, from what we've seen that has happened so far, the market has been, has been pushing higher. And if you do continue to push on higher from here and we take out the most recent, the uh, late, late September high, we could be looking heading back up towards the uh, the July, the late early July high, which comes into play at this area here at one spot 33.61. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking heading back up towards the June high at one spot 34.72. Any moves to the downside in the pound dollar could uh, find some, some support in around here, the 130 mark, or this blue line here, the 50 moving average, which comes into play at one spot 29.82. One spot 29.82. As I was saying, we, we have uh, had a fairly brutal day, a couple of days of selling in the European equity markets, um, but we have seen a bit of a bounce back today. This year is the DAX, the German market. Like I was saying, we do have Euro, Eurozone CPI up during the week. If you draw a line from the high of June through the high of July and also through the high of September, we can see fairly. We can see we can we can see that this uh, trend line resistance has been in play on a number of occasions. So, a classic example of of lower highs. We have seen it in recent times as well. Actually, lower lows as well. So, it's very much in a very steep downward trend. If the kind of negative sentiment does 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 continue, and we could be looking heading back down towards the 11,500 area on the DAX. Any moves to the upside may run to resistance at 12,000, a big psychological number. And then if you go beyond that, it may run to resistance in around this area here, where, this, where the trend line comes to the play, which would be in around uh, 12,250. Taking a look now at the uh, the Dow Jones. As I said, we have the Fed minutes, uh, Fed minute meetings next week. Um, and as I say, we have had a fairly decent sell-off. In the in the Dow um, in in recent sessions, so the big picture is essentially since February the Dow's been broadly been moving higher. We can draw a trend line support here between the lows, uh, it, it, um, essentially between February, April, and also May. So we're, we're, we're well off the lows here. It wasn't that long ago we we're at an all-time high. But as you can see, just how far the Dow has fallen in recent sessions. 
but most importantly we actually um we're back above this red line here the trading moving average which comes into play at 25,161 while we remain north of that metric uh it's like the outlook for the Dow could remain positive and if you do like to kind of push on higher from here we could be looking heading back up towards this blue line here the 50 moving average which comes into play at just just above 26,000 notice how the 50 moving average did manage to act as support uh, back in mid-August and it all supported the potential to become new uh, new resistance so keep an eye on that and if we go beyond that we can then be looking heading back up back up towards the uh, the October high moves to the downside if you uh, if you break below 25,000 we could be heading back down to, down toward this trend line which come into play in around the 24,340 350 mark take a look now at dollar cad as I say, we have Canadian CPI coming out next week. So the broad picture, essentially, since uh, since January, so through, through the bulk of the year, the dollar cat has broadly been moving higher. And we're, we're back above this red line here, the Trinity moving average, which comes into play at one spot, 28.87. And if you remain north of that, it's likely that, that the outlook is going to remain positive. And if you continue to push on higher from there, we could be looking at targeting the early September high of one spot, 32.26. Move to the downside, uh, could find support from the Trinity moving average. And if you break below the recent uh, October low of one spot, 20, one spot 27.82, we could be looking heading back down towards the kind of the 125 region. Lastly, I'll just quickly talk about ASOS, one of the companies, as they have numbers out next week as well. So even though the stock has had a terrific run over the last number of years, we have had a fairly sizable sell-off essentially since March. Uh, it's been a classic example of the downward trend, lower lows and lower, ha lower highs. We recently were back down to levels not seen uh, since December, December 2016, so 22-month lows. There's a steady increase in negative momentum on, on the MACD indicator, and but we are hovering around the 50-pound mark. And if we hold south of it, which is a big psychological number, we could see further, we could see further selling pressure. And if we do look, continue to kind of push it in the, in the recent downward trend. We could look heading back down towards 44.18. If it do manage to retake 50 pounds, uh, we could be looking heading back up towards the this blue line here, the 50 moving average, which comes into play at 58.62. No sign of communications. It did manage to act as resistance, so it could act resistance again in the near term. If you have any uh, comments you want to make in, um, on this video or any other other videos we've made here at CMC Marcus, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. And that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.